athletes at the conclusion of the questions for the student athletes they'll be dismissed then questions for the head coach can start please raise your hand and someone around with a microphone will come around please give your name and media affiliation if you are joining on zoom please raise the hand function for questions we will address the questions in room first and get to zoom if time allows now we'll start with an opening statement from coach greg mcdermott coach first of all uh congratulations uh, to coach gross his his staff uh, and his team uh, on a phenomenal year. Uh, I, I gained a new appreciation uh, for the job he does um, in our preparation for Akron. Um, that team was, was very connected uh, defensively, very unselfish in the offensive end. Um, and as I mentioned uh, a couple days ago, they lost several close games that were really not far from winning 30 games this year. So th they had uh, uh, our utmost respect and I think you saw, uh, you know, especially in the first half, um, you know, it's a quality, quality team uh, that we beat today. So, uh, you know, we're excited because we beat a good basketball team and proud of our guys. Uh, you know, I thought we took really good shots. And when we take really good shots, uh, you know, we're a pretty good basketball team. And uh, we've got to clean up some things uh, with some of the turnovers. But, uh, you know, defensively, I thought we adjusted as the game went on and uh, did a much better job in the second half. Okay, representing Creighton student athletes, Mason Miller, Ryan Cockbrenner, and Baylor Shireman. Questions for student athletes? Right down here up front. Matt Satilli, KUTV Omaha. Baylor, what flipped in those last couple minutes before halftime? You guys go on the run and don't look back from there. What, what changed? Um, I think we were able to get a, um, some stops in a row and then on the offensive end, um, get shots and, and like coach said, you know, we really struggled with turnovers in the first half um, and, and those last four minutes we really, you know, took care of the ball and we're able to get shots and stops and when we're able to do that um, That's when we're able to really um, gain some separation Right second row Maddie Marius white and blue review I guess for Ryan and Mason Pace felt like Akron even though they were hitting shots were playing at your guys' preferred pace Did you feel like as the first half wore on and especially as the second half got going that that started to wear into them? Uh, yeah, that's kind of how we approach a lot of games is, you know, even at the beginning of the games, our pace may not necessarily get us a lot of buckets early on because our team's fresh, but like we play at that pace, practice at that pace all the time. So we can keep that up for 40 minutes. Uh, not every team we play against can. So, you know, when you start wearing into them like that, you start to get a few easy baskets or a few b good looks because uh, you're running the other team. So I think that definitely helped us toward the end of the first half and then the second half. Uh, right middle there. John Walker, Omaha World Herald. Ryan, what, what changed defensively for you in the second half in, in the job that you did on Enrique Freeman? Um, I think just a little bit of getting used to how he plays. You know, you can watch someone on film a lot and get as used to it as you can. But uh, I mean, at the end of the day, he's a really good player. And, you know, just made some mental adjustments as to how I wanted to guard him in the post and did a little bit better job. He still got a few buckets because he's a really good player. but. Uh, yeah, just, just being able to make adjustments in the game. Front right. <clears throat> Matt Satilli, KETV Omaha. Mason, when did you know that something was going right for you, and, and what kind of an impact when you're hitting your shots like that can that make on your team and on your teammates? Uh, honestly, I mean, just every single day. I mean, I, I work on my shot every single day, so I mean, I kind of coming into the game expect uh, to make shots like that. but. I mean, I guess just running to the corner, getting open looks, and uh, playing within the offense kind of helps uh, helps the team a lot, especially when we have uh, great players like Ryan and Baylor over here. Uh, being able to space the floor for them is it's huge for them. Zach Jackson. Uh, Zach Jackson, the Athletic. For any of you guys, just the experience you guys have at this stage. How did that help today, and how can that help you the rest of the tournament? Well, I just think, you know, the game's 40 minutes long and, and, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs that go throughout a basketball game. And obviously in the first half, you know, um, there was some things that didn't go right for us and they were kind of, you know, hanging with us and, and whatnot. But then, you know, we were able to get stops and just, it's a game of runs and we were able to go on ours and then continue it. Um, so I think that experience of knowing that the game's 40 minutes and that, um, you know, it's, it, it nothing <coughs> can happen. I think that, you know, helps us out. Any more for student athletes? All right, last one right here, front right. Matt Satilli, KETV Omaha. Baylor, is there, regardless of opponent, always a challenge that comes with the first game of the tournament, just getting the kinks out of the way and finding your rhythm? Yeah, I, I think so. You know, obviously, um, it's a, you know, the tournament is so 
um, you know, fun, and, and not everybody gets to take part of it. And, um, you know, the start of the game, um, you know, the atmosphere, um, it's just a little different than, than a regular game. And um, regardless of who you play the first round, a lot of times, you know, it can be really tough. I mean, last year at NC State, it was a tough game. This year, same thing. So regardless of your opponent, the first game is always, you know, a challenge. All right, thank you. Student athletes can be dismissed. Once again, please raise your hand. Coaches for Coach McDermott, right here to the right. Matty Marius, White and Blue Review. I don't know what you're saying to them in the huddle as that first half's going on, but obviously both teams were making a lot of shots. Did you, did you get a sense that because of the way the pace was going and that Akron wasn't really trying to slow down and play to their style yeah. that you guys were going to eventually break through? Some of the things I said in the huddle I can't repeat to you. That doesn't happen with me very often. Uh, but, you know, I, I was not surprised that they came at us in transition. Um, and watching them play, they, you know, they're opportunistic. But, they, you know, they have a lot of guys that can handle it in transition and, and lead the break. Um, <clears throat> so I, I wasn't, was not surprised they came at us the way that they did. Uh, you know, we had some mental mistakes that allowed them to kind of get going. And, and uh, you know, Freeman Banks in his first three. Um, you know, that's a, that's a nervy shot for a guy that doesn't shoot a lot. You know, Kalkbrenner makes one too. But, um, you know, if he, the first one doesn't go in with a bank, maybe he's not as comfortable. You know, the most he's ever shot in a game this year was three and shot 47 on the year. So, you know, we really didn't think coming in that he would be willing to shoot eight three-point shots. Um, so we had to adjust, obviously, as the game went on. <clears throat> Questions for Coach? Right here uh, to the left aisle. Kevin Gorman, Pittsburgh Trib. Uh, Greg, how much did you kind of bank on that when it started to turn into kind of a one-on-one -on -one there with Kalkbrenner and, and Freeman that the rest of your guys, with the supporting cast, would start to get open looks the way that they did? Yeah, especially when Freeman picked up a few fouls. You know, that takes away a little bit of his aggressiveness, and that's just naturally going to happen when you're in some foul trouble. So um, as we got that lead, we really made it a point. Uh, to make sure we played through Kalkbrenner. And I, I thought the guys did a job, good job of picking their spots. And, uh, you know, and, and like I said in the open, I, I, you know, the 17 three-point shots, we had a couple we had to take in late shot clock situation, but I think they were really good threes for us against a team that's been a lead all season of taking away threes and, and making sure the percentage, I think the team shot 30% against uh, Akron from, on the season from three. So, to do what we did offensively against what I consider a very good defensive team is really a credit to our team. Front right. Matt Satilli, KETV Omaha. Coach, this is the fourth year in a row that you guys have won a tournament game, and you've now passed all other Creighton coaches combined for most wins in the NCAA tournament. To have four years in a row where you can get a win in March and to have the success that you've had, what, kind of a, a, what does that say about this team that they can perform at this time of year? Well, I mean, first of all, it's you never take for granted getting here because it's really difficult. Uh, you know, what is it, 16 or 17 percent of the teams, uh, Division One teams, get in the tournament? That's not very many. Uh, and there's a lot of disappointment on Selection Sunday with teams across the country that felt they were deserving and they didn't get in. So the first thing you do is you appreciate the opportunity, uh, and then you celebrate the things that you've done to get here. Um, like I told the guys in the locker room before the game, we talk about process all year long. You know, trusting the process, trusting your work. Um, you know, that process is what led us to here. And that process is what's going to give us hopefully an opportunity to kind of finish the job and keep advancing in this tournament. But, um, you know, I've had, you know, really only one of those teams was an inexperienced team. Um, the team when, you know, uh, three years ago um, when, when Nemhart got hurt and Trey had to slide to the, uh, to the point guard position. We were playing some freshmen, uh, you know, Alex O'Connell only transferred in for one year. Ryan Hawkins for one year. Uh, the rest of the the rest of the teams we've had some pretty good experience in the tournament, and I think that really helps you uh, when you come back. You know what to expect. Uh, teams that are here the first time are taking pictures and doing all that when they go on the court. Our guys today was like, all right, you know, this is where we expected to be. Uh, you know, what are we going to do? And and let's do it and get out of here. So uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to play in the tournament, and you know, we we hope we're we're blessed to be able to stick around to Saturday, and, and uh, we'll try to give it our best. Left back. Tom Withers, Associated Press. Greg, I'm just curious what you might have said to Kalkbrenner um, when you pulled him over to the sideline on that late breakaway that didn't exactly go the right way. <laughs> well, 
He, he had one uh, early in the season where he had attempted to break a press by himself, uh, which was the first time that I'd ever seen that in the four years that I've coached him. Um, today was a, was a first as well. So we were chuckling about, uh, he said he thought about going in behind his back at the end. That's what brought my chuckle. Uh, but, you know, he plays the game the right way. He plays with emotion. He, you can tell he loves to play the game, um, impacts the game in so many ways that don't show up in this stat sheet. So that, that was a fun moment for both of us. All right, last two here, right and then left middle. Matty Marinus, White and Blue Review. Mac, when you, as the game wore on it, it did feel like, I know it's by design defensively, and I know you gave up some offensive rebounds, but you did force them to take the shots that you <coughs> designed your defense to force teams to take. How did that execution ramp up as the game went on? Yeah, I mean, we had to make some adjustments when the bigs were hitting threes. So we had to switch a little bit more, and then we got cross-matched a few times. Um, but I thought early in the second half, I thought, uh, I can't remember uh, who hit him. I think Johnson hit a couple tough twos. Uh, where we went over the screen, we were there. He hits a 16, 17 footer with a hand in his face. That's kind of what we're trying to do. Um, so I, I was happy really after the, uh, you know, the first seven or eight minutes of the game. I thought we settled in a little bit better defensively. Uh, but you know, credit to them, they also made some some tough shots. All right, last question right here. Kevin Gorman, Pittsburgh Trib again. Um, I know you were locked into your game, and I'm wondering how much you were aware of what was going on in Omaha with Duquesne, which is the host school here and uh, you know, beating BYU and the crowd's reaction to that and, and at times during your game and whether the same thing was happening back home. It was a little strange to play the game with that going on, by the way, because the, the cheers and the oohs and ahs didn't really match up to what was going on on the floor in front of us. So that was somewhat uh, challenging for our guys. But uh, I, had, I had saw in the locker room before I left that they had the lead and then obviously what, saw the reaction uh, Keith's been a friend of mine a long time. We coached against each other back when I was at Northern Iowa and Creighton was in the Valley and he was at Akron. Uh, so we, we've we known each other a long time. Uh, you know, what a great way, uh, you know, for him to go out as, as his career is winding down. Um, but he's, he's always been a terrific coach. He's tremendously respected in our profession. And, you know, good things happen to good people sometimes. And, uh, you know, he deserved that. So I'm really, I'm really happy for him, uh, you know, and his program, and, and especially his family with some of the things they're going through. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Congratulations.